Hey y'all, and welcome back to my channel. Good effort, Meg. Today, we are going to be creating the next Pokemon in the evolution, and that is Flareon. So today, I'm going to be showing y'all a new technique for adding little details to your crocheted pieces. I've never tried this before, so we're gonna experiment together, and that is needle felting. I will be sure to link the kit that I picked up for this project down below in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join our amazing community. For this Pokemon, we're gonna need two different color yarns. This is our first one. I went with an orange, and we're also gonna need a cream color. As always, for Amigurumis, you're gonna need two safety eyes. We're gonna need some black felt. You're going to need a 3.125 sized hook, a tapestry needle. Just like Eevee, we're gonna be using a pet brush. Again, I'm not gifting this Pokemon, so I'm not worried about using Penny and Tyson's brush on this. And for this project, I wanted to try a different technique. And this is something I've been wanting to try for a very long time. We'll see how it goes. I don't think you would necessarily need it for this project, but I got some wool and some needle felting tools. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. So we're gonna be starting with the head and to start that, we're gonna do a magic ring. So we're gonna hold the yarn as such, make an X on the inside of our hand and two parallel lines on the back of our fingers. You're gonna go under, over, pull that guy through, twist, just like that, pinch it off of your fingers, grab your leading yarn, and we're going to yarn over once and pull through. And that is how we lock in the magic ring. And we're gonna do six single crochet just inside here. So right there where it's split, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. That's a single crochet. So that is our first stitch. And we're gonna do that five more times so we have a total of six. So here are our six stitches and I'm gonna put a stitch marker right there in that last stitch that we just did. There we are. And now we're going to pull this little tail right here. And it's gonna make a nice little ring. So just keep pulling it until it's nice and taut. And we'll pull it tighter once we get a couple of rounds in. So I like to tuck it underneath my leading yarn the tail there, and that is round one. So round two, we're gonna be working increases in all six of those stitches. So starting right here, we're gonna put our hook in, right into that first stitch, yarn over and pull through. That's just a single crochet. And then in that same stitch, we're gonna do another single crochet yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And that is an increase. So it's just two single crochets in a single stitch. So we're gonna do that all the way around. Now on this final stitch, again, we're just putting our stitch marker in that final stitch. And that's just gonna keep track of our rounds. And at this point, um, you can go ahead and count. We should have 12 stitches. Now for round three, you'll see there's a sequence of steps in square brackets, and it says increase, comma, single crochet. And then outside the brackets, it says times six. That means you're gonna do the sequence of stitches which are within the square brackets six times. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this first stitch, we're gonna work an increase. Then we're gonna work a single crochet, and that's one sequence. So the next stitch, we're gonna work an increase, and then we're gonna work a single crochet. And that's two to do that the rest of the way. So at this point, we should have 18 stitches. And now that we have a couple of rounds, 
Go ahead and pull that tail a little bit tighter. So now that hole right in the center is completely closed up. So now on to round four. And you see those square brackets again, but now there's a few instructions that are outside of the square brackets. And all that means is you're just gonna read across from left to right in the order that they're written. So we have a single crochet, and then we have a sequence of five square bracket. So we're going to do that. So now the last two things say increase and then single crochet, because we just finished that sequence. So now we're gonna do that. So increase, single crochet. And at this point, we should have 24 stitches. And if you're wondering how I know how many stitches there should be, at the end of each round, there's a parentheses with a number in it. And that's the number of stitches you should have at the end of that round. Now for round five, which y'all now know how to do, round six. So now we're gonna work round seven through 10 doing nothing but single crochets. Make sure when you're working these rounds that you're keeping track of what round you're on. So that was the end of round 10. So this is what you should be looking like right about now. So now we're gonna move on to round 11. And now we're gonna do two rows of single crochets. So that is the end of round 13. And now I am going to place our safety eyes. I'm going to make this the back of the Pokemon. So I'm just going to flip this 180 degrees so that way it's sitting on the bottom. And we want to put the safety eye between rows 11 and 12. So we just did row 13, which is this set right here. So we want it to go in this row right here and you want about seven stitches in between each eye. So with the first eye, you can really just pick a spot. So I'm just gonna plop this bad boy right about there. And then I'm just gonna count seven stitches in this direction. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna put it in the next stitch because we want seven stitches in between them. So it'll look just like that. And I'm gonna put the backings on and we're gonna continue going around. Okay, so now we have the eyes installed and now we are ready to begin our decreasing rounds. So the way I like to do a decrease is instead of putting my hook in between or like underneath the stitch, like how you would traditionally do, I like to split the stitch. So you can see it kind of has like a V shape. So I am going to put my hook right there in between. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. We're gonna split the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Now with these three loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. And that is a decreasing stitch. And just like before, we're working in those brackets. So just keep following this around and repeating those steps. So again, I'm gonna show you that decrease. So we're gonna split the stitch, yarn over, pull through, split the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three stitches. Okay, so now we are done with the head. So we are gonna fasten off this final stitch. So to do that, we wanna make sure we have a plenty long tail for sewing, like so. I think that should be more than enough. We're going to snip it at the end. And then to fasten off, all we're gonna do is just pull the extra yarn through that stitch. So just pull it all the way through. There we go. So now it won't unravel. And we have this for sewing and we will stuff the pieces once we're ready to sew. Now we're gonna start on the body and we're gonna begin just like we started on the head by making a magic ring. So we're gonna cross, make an X, parallel lines, 
taking our crochet hook, go under and over, slide it through, and twist. Pinch, remove, yarn over, pull through. Then we're going to do six stitches, remembering to put a stitch marker in the final stitch. Make sure you pull that tail nice and tight. Don't forget you can tighten it as we get a few more rounds in. Make sure that tail is under your leading yarn. We're going to be working in the round similar to the head. And I think I have prepared you with all of the instruction you'll need to complete the body. So I am going to quickly work up to the point where we are going to do a color change and then I will show you how I do that. So we just finished round 10 and now we're ready to do a color change. So we're going to bring in our cream colored yarn and this is the way that I do it. So I start with, I've got my orange on my hook. I insert my hook into the next stitch. I kind of pinch the orange behind like so, and then I bring the cream colored yarn with the tail like away from the piece. I kind of hook it on here onto my hook. I twist a couple times, and then I pull through. Now I have that loop there, and then I yarn over and I pull through both. So that's how I start my color change. And then what I'm going to do is trim, not too close, I'm going to trim the orange to about the same length of the cream. And then what we want to do is we want to work these into the stitch so that way they don't unravel. So kind of having some tension, we're kind of pull them to the top of our piece like this. So when I insert my hook into the next stitch, I'm going to be capturing not only the stitch, but these two pieces here as well, which are the tails. And then I'm just gonna work a single crochet like I normally would, just like that. So now I'm going to keep working this around and keep capturing these tails for a couple of stitches. So that should be plenty so it doesn't unravel. Now you could keep working this until you get to the end of these tails. But I've had experience in the past where I've worked it up into the end and then the tails will poke out towards the right side of the piece. So to prevent that, I actually stop with a little bit of a tail and because this is going to be captured inside, I just kind of push them like that to the inside of the piece and then I keep working as normal without worrying about those tails. And then we're just going to keep working. So now we are done with the body, so we're going to go ahead and fasten off. Again, leaving a little bit of a tail, snipping it, and then pulling through. Now we are going to start on the legs, and again we're starting with the magic ring, so we're going to make an X and parallel, going under and over, pulling through and twist, pinch and remove, yarn over and pull through. I'm starting to sound like calisthenics now. <laughs> And we're going to stitch six in here, putting our stitch marker in that last stitch and pulling our tail taut. And now we're going to work an increase and then single crochet round and then a couple rounds of just single crochets. Okay, so that's the leg. So now we need to cut a tail and fasten off. There we go. And here are the legs. Now we're going to work on the arms. So we're going to start with the magic ring. So we're going to make an X and then parallel, under and over, pull through and twist. Pinch, remove, yarn over, pull through. And we're going to stitch six in there. Put our stitch marker in and pull our tail top. And a couple of rounds of single crochets. And then we are going to do a decrease round. Okay, now we're going to trim a tail and fasten off. And there's our little arm. And here are our arms. And now for the ears. So again, we're going to start off with a magic ring. So we're going to make an X, parallel, under, over, pull through, and twist. Yarn over pull through, and this time we're only doing four stitches in the magic ring. Pull that tail. Now we're just going to work how we normally have, 
in all the previous pieces. Now the ear can be a little bit tricky to work on because it's gonna want to initially flip to the inside. So make sure you put the right side out and you have to fight it a little bit. Now we're gonna pull a tail and fasten off. And there's our little ear. And that's what both ears look like. And these won't be stuffed. We're gonna press them flat and then they'll be sewn on like that. And for the last piece, we are going to sew the tail. And for this piece, we're doing it in cream. Okay, so we're at the second to last row. So at this point, we are gonna to want to start stuffing the tail. And now we are gonna work our last round. And there's our tail. So the next step, we are going to cut out some black pieces like we did for Evie to glue onto the ears. And so since I already did this for Evie, I'm just gonna essentially fold this over and then cut out these pieces again because they should be the same size. So I am just using this cheap glue stick. I would probably use fabric glue if you had it. Uh, if you don't, then just use whatever works for you, but this is what I'm gonna use. But there's our ears. So the next piece that we need to prep beyond it, having it crocheted is the tail. And so similar to what we did with Evie is we're gonna add some fluff on the tail. So I cut nine pieces of the cream colored yarn. And these are about eight inches long. And all I did was just folded it like that to determine the length that I would need to cut it because when folded in half, that's how long it'll be. And probably don't need that much room, but I just wanted to make sure that I had plenty to work with to like cut off and shape and use like so. And where we are going to attach these, so you can kind of see this circle here, which was our last row. And we are going to put these pieces of yarn right here in this row here where you can see that there's a little bit more of a gap because we still need room to stitch this on. But I don't want to attach up here because then it'll you'll see the barren tail. So we're gonna attach them right about here. And the way we do that is you just insert your hook into one of these spaces. You take one of your pieces of yarn that's folded in half, you put it on your hook you pull it through like so, and then you're just going to essentially make it like a little knot like that. So that's one of them. So we are gonna do this for all nine of these. So now that we have all those pieces, we're gonna pull the tail a bit out of the way because we don't want to mess that up. And we're gonna pull it towards the point of the tail like so. And now we are gonna grab our pet brush and we are going to start combing this out and once we get it combed out then we'll start shaping it with scissors okay so this is what it looks like at this point so i'm going to trim it off and it's still a little thin like i'm not super duper happy with this again i'm still trying to get used to this technique maybe my yarn was too long so it started like splitting right where i didn't want it to <laughs> experiment time okay so i want to see if i can take some of this extra floof and needle felt it onto the tail that's what we're going to try to do i have no idea if this is going to work or not i just want to fill in some of these like boulder spots And I've never done this before, so I don't actually know what I'm doing. All I know is that these needles are very sharp. So to try not to poke myself with them. I think that's pretty, okay. And then can I brush it out some more? Oh no, no, that falls apart. <laughs> so I think we could use this for like the under part. So we can like pull this back, like our yarn bits, like that. We can attach some floof and it'll just kind of hide some of the crocheted bits that I don't want necessarily showing. I don't think with this you have to stab hard. You just have to stab a lot, <laughs> which I think is important 
So you have more control and you don't accidentally stab yourself. It looks a little wild and crazy, but don't worry. I have a picture in my head. I think I'm pretty happy with that. And now all I wanna do is kind of shape the tail to a point. I'm pretty happy with the way that this tail came out. So I think I'm gonna call it done here. So next we are gonna start assembling our flareon. So first I want to attach the ears to the head. So the way that I assemble my amigurumis is just the way that I typically do it. I don't think there's really a wrong or a right way. So feel free to do what feels right to you. So I'm gonna start with this ear first and all I'm looking at is to create almost like a quadrant from that center hole there. And I want the ear to lie somewhere about there. And so I'm going to kind of tack it in place with my needle already threaded. And I'm just kind of looking at where that's gonna fall. And as you can tell, I have not stuffed the head yet. I will do that when I'm ready to attach the body and the head. Okay, so I'm looking to see, am I happy with where that's at? I think that should be fine. Oh no, you're coming off. So I am pretty happy with that. So after I tack it into place, I just try to my best to hold it roughly where I want. And I've gone down into the body, the main piece, and up. And so what I'm going to do is then go from the inside of the ear out, like that. And I'm just picking up some stitch. And then I'm going to pull through like that and pull it taut just like so. And I'm just gonna double check again. It could be moved back a little bit, but I, I think I'm okay with that. And so now that the end of the yarn is in the ear, I am just gonna go down into the head and up. And we're just gonna work our way around. So I'm gonna go from the inside of the stitch on the ear to the outside. And then again, I'm gonna go down into the head and up another stitch and I'm trying to work where the ear will kind of hide any of these stitches and don't be afraid to like try different placements and undo as necessary and redo. It took me months to get to a place where I felt comfortable with my stitching technique. I tried a bunch of different techniques of different people I saw on YouTube, of tutorials that I read online but this is just kind of the one that stuck with me and I was able to get the cleanest look. But we're just gonna work this all the way around and do this for both ears. So I'm going to quickly, <laughs> for you, do that. And so now I'm ready to fasten off the yarn. And to do that, I'm just going to put my needle through the head and I'm not gonna pull all the way through. So I have this loop here and I'm gonna come from behind it, from where my leading yarn exited, and I'm gonna pull through like so, and then I'm gonna pull it tight, as tight as I can, because we don't wanna be able to see that loop. I want it to blend in. And then all I'm gonna do is put my needle in and because this hasn't been stuffed, I'm just gonna pull it through the bottom like so and then pull it nice and tight. I'm putting pressure with my fingers on the backside so I don't like invert my ear and that'll lock it into place. So that is one ear done. So here he is with both of his ears attached, but now we're going to move on to attaching the body to the head. So to start with attaching the body and the head, we are first going to start with stuffing the head and the body just a little bit. I prefer to wait till the very, very end to put the remaining stuffing in the body and the head. And then one of the things that I like to do is take this final stitch here and this final stitch here and kind of marrying them up like so. It should be the same number of stitches on the body on that final row as it is on the head in its final row. So you're just doing a one-to-one -one stitch. And I also like to follow on the orange side because that's the yarn we're gonna use to sew with. 
the stitches are going in a clockwise direction from the way that I'm holding this. So that's the way I'm going to stitch. To start, we have this in our final stitch, the tail. So I am just gonna tack it on by going under and over, just like we did with the ear. You can either go down and over like this. So we can try that. Let's see what that looks like. So that might look nice and tidy. So why don't we try it that way? So we'll kind of make like a little ladder. So now we'll go across this orange stitch and we went down this stitch. So we're gonna go up this next white stitch like that. That might be a nice little edge there. So let's, let's just sew it on this way for kicks. This isn't how I normally do it, but see what I'm curious about. So we're going to be adding some fluff around the neck like what we did with Evie. So I'm not too concerned about that little bit of orange that you're seeing between the white there. But we're just gonna do this all the way around the head and the body. So now that there's only a little hole left, I am gonna finish stuffing the head and the body. So I think I'm happy with that. So now I am just gonna finish up stitching this together. So I'm just gonna lock it in with this stitch that we did at the very beginning right there. So I'm just gonna pull it almost all the way through, then coming in from the opposite side, go through the loop, make that knot, pull it tight, and then all I'm gonna do is take my needle and stab it through somewhere and pull it all the way through, pull it a little bit tighter like this and snip it off. So there he is. And you can see I actually misstitched right there. But again, that's not gonna be too big of a worry on this piece, just because we're gonna have some fluff around the neck. So that should be pretty well hidden. If I wasn't doing that, I would probably go back and redo it. But just to show you, even with as many of these as that I make, I also make mistakes. Um, but you can always go back and fix them or you can just cover them up. But now I am gonna go ahead and attach the arms and the legs using the same techniques that I have already showed you. So I'm just gonna speed along and do that. So now we are ready to sew on the tail. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So we got the tail attached and we are almost done. So we're gonna add a few finishing touches. We're gonna to add his fur around his neck and his fur on the top of his head. So to do his fur around his neck, I'm gonna cut strands. I want them to be about this long when I start combing them. So I'm just gonna fold that in half and I'm going to cut that length. So that's one piece. So I'm gonna cut several more of these. Okay. So now I have 24 pieces of the cream colored yarn and I am going to attach them around the neck exactly how we attach them on the tail. So I actually, just personal preference, I think I'm gonna move up one row just so I can hide those orange bits a little bit better. Okay, so we have the yarn attached and just like what we did on the tail, we're gonna take this comb and we're gonna start combing it out and fluffing it and then shaping it. And then I'm going to use my needle felting uh, utensil and I'm just gonna tame it a little bit. And I'm probably gonna do it to the tail as well just because it seems to like wanna fall down, but I want it to stay in line with the tail. That is so much better. So I'm gonna kinda do this with the ruffles around the neck. So I'm gonna start with this brush, trim it up with the scissors, and then kinda shape it using these needle felting tools. Okay, so there's the uh, mane all combed out. So now I am gonna see what I can do with this guy. So cute. So the last thing that we need to do is add his little mohawk on 
the top of his noggin. In order to save on materials, I am going to try to fashion a mohawk out of this. <laughs> it looks like a... Uh... <laughs> Y'all remember those troll toys from like the 90s? <laughs> That's what his little hairdo looks like. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that looks better. Just trimming that down just a hair. So here is Flareon all finished up. He's so cute, oh my gosh. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really happy with the way that Flareon came together. And I'm even more excited about learning this new technique of needle felting. I think that it just brought my crochet piece to a different level that I haven't been able to achieve before just in the level of detail with like the fur and everything. So I'm excited to keep using this technique and trying different methods of using it and incorporating it into my other crafts. I know that I can use needle felting as a standalone craft as well, so I might try that in the future. But yeah, well, I hope this was helpful for you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around for more content like this and others. Go check out the other videos on my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!